Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to my presentation. Hubsman Quick Setup Guide, latest version, new features, how to maintain a failover controller. Okay. Welcome to Middle East Dubai, Mom. My name, my name is Georgios Argiridis. Uh, you can call me George. It's easier. Where I am coming from? I actually born in Cyprus. I was born in Cyprus, but Cyprus is near Greece. If you don't know Cyprus, little little bit about me is uh, I have experience with computers generally with satellite, with VoIP, with networks, with servers, uh, with security of networks. And uh, I have expertise with uh, wireless ISPs and ISPs infrastructure. I'm the first uh, Microtik certified consultant in Greece since 2011. The first uh, certified trainer in Greece since 2012. Uh, I have a bachelor in applied computing. All the training, uh, all the certificates of Microtech active. I'm a certified trainer, yes. This certificate and this certificate here. What I do, I provide trainings on demand and long term uh, consultancy, architecture of networks, and project management services. More about me at the end of this presentation. So, in few words, we are going to review a quick setup of Hubsman, the latest uh, features, uh, some uh, new features of uh, wireless rep, and how to maintain a failover controller. Hubsman features, you have heard of, him, of, of them uh, uh, in previous presentations, I believe. Capsman is Control Access Point System Manager. Capsman, it's a Microtik router. Cap is a Microtik router. Caps, many Microtik routers. To keep things simple. What are the requirements? Any router board, any PC or server, version 6.11 and uh, newer. Wireless FP, but let's forget this package because we have Capsman CM2, uh, which introduces improvements, new features uh, since 2015. Capsman version 2 is stable and is used everywhere but it's not compatible with version one. So please upgrade version two. What are the new features of this uh, Capsman? Version two, you can use automatic upgrade for all the caps, for all, all the access points can have the same version. You can push from the controller all all access points to have the same version at the same time. Uh, the connectivity between CAP and CAPSMAN is better. There is a format, prefix, uh, name format, prefix, identity, common name, IP address ranges, better logging, better level two MTU discovery. And what is about wireless rep? Today, we have wireless rep package. It's renamed as wireless uh, package. You will not see it anymore as wireless CM2 or wireless FP. It will be wireless, just wireless, but it will be wireless rep. It will remove all existing wireless packages. Why? Why do you need all these packages? You don't need them. Latest version with all features, 
no bugs. So, I strongly recommend that you use the latest version, 637, to get rid of FP, CM2, and the uh, previous versions. And see the new features of wireless rep with later. Okay, simple guide. We have to enable the service to create a bridge, add IP configuration, create hubs from configuration. This is the way you go to the Capsman controller. Uh, we enable it. We have to add an IP, a DHCP server, a NAT. We have to add the SSID. We have uh, to add uh, the encryption. And now, we have to go to the access points to uh, tell them where to connect to the Capsman. We can either tell the access point to connect to an IP or use discovery interface to communicate with layer two. But this is IP based. We can run Capsman on the same hardware as, uh, as the access point. So this router board has three cards for access points, but it has also the ability to manage other access points. To do this, we just have to enable the local address here. So it will connect to itself. Provisioning. We have to create the rules to provision the access points. And here how it is in the Capsman and in the cap. It will disable the wireless interface because it's managed by the Capsman. And in the registration table of the controller, we will see all the registrations from all access points. A central registration table. We don't have to look anymore on every access point. We can manually provision every radio. We can see what is provisioned already. We can create static uh, interfaces. And we can create several SSIDs, virtual access points, one for internet, one for private use, one for the PDAs. Okay, I believe you have seen a lot of Capsman in previous presentations. So I would rather spend uh, some time uh, on the new features than focusing here. Here is how to create the virtual access points. This is the main interface, and this is the virtual SSID. So you can have one SSID here, and uh, one from the virtual. For guests, we can use an access list as we use in the access point to restrict, uh, restrict uh, people from uh, connecting to the access points. We can ban specific MAC address, or we can allow uh, some signal level. If somebody has a poor level of signal, we can block him. Uh, we can send uh, up, we can allow Apple devices, for example, to connect, and rest of them to send them to a radius for authentication. Uh, this is something I want to spend some time on this slide. There are different configurations, channel, caps configuration, and the frequency. If we set up a frequency here, we can override the frequency that we have added in the channels. 
So if we say uh, that we have created a list, list one, and we create few channels in this list. We have uh, channel one, six, and 11. We can override the, the frequency for a specific, uh, with, with a specific configuration to this frequency. See here, it's using this frequency instead of this one. So sometimes when you, when you see something going wrong, you better check what you're overriding. Okay. We can encrypt the, manage, the management of the access points, the communication of access points, uh, by using certificates. But this is only for the access point communication to the Capsman, not the data. For, for the data, we, you will need another uh, encryption method, like IPsec. This way, with auto, you can automatically create certificates if you, if you cannot create there. So it will create on the fly, on the fly certificates. Uh, this is the way. It will request certificates. If you add this to the manager, it will allow no insecure connections from the access point. So why will we do this? Can anybody tell me? Why do we need certificates? Why do we need uh, uh, certificates for what kind of security? Yeah, but why do we need this uh, secure communication of the access points with the controller? What's the reason? The reason is that, okay, Exactly. We want to avoid anybody going and uh, placing an access point in our network without our authorization. So our access points use this certificate to connect to the manager, Capsman, and we use this option. It will block the uh, rest of them. Okay, you have to know in which country you operate and configure the capsman to follow the regulations. Transmit power and the uh, frequencies. This can be done automatically. See here, this, uh, will this is probably set for US where the maximum uh, transmit power is one watt, but this access point has six DBI antenna. And the uh, Capsman will lower the power to 24 dB. So we are uh, inside the legal regulation, we're okay. So 16th of October, I have advised Microtik to include uh, wireless tuning parameters to, to Capsman. And I'm glad and I would like to thank them that they included them finally and eventually today. These uh, parameters here in the new version of Capsman uh, allow us to tune uh, all the access points like we did separately on every X point. This is very advanced configura configuration, but sometimes it's useful. And this is only in the latest version. Rates, I also gave this advice. And again, thanks Microtik for this. Uh, we can enable higher or lower rates for different rooms. For this room, we can have better rates because it's a smaller room. 
for other room, we can have lower rates because there is more noise. We can tune our wireless with this. Again, we need the latest version for this. Okay. A new feature that is not a Capsman feature, but it is very useful, is that every access point, uh, we can go to the access point while it's transmitting and run background scan. See this? This is, this is a feature of wireless rep package. So without stopping to transmit, we can scan the other access point, what uh, frequencies they are using, and find a better frequency for less interference and better performance and quality of our network. So, like I said, in 2014, I have done uh, my first presentation in Capsman when it was a very young version. Uh, I did a different presentation. It was about uh, routed network. You can find it in the website of Microtik. But uh, this time, I, I want to say something different that many people ask me about uh, how can I have a bug up controller? What if I'm in a place that has uh, uh, many access points, like uh, 50, 500 access points, 1,000 users, 2,000 users, 5,000 users, a big hotel, a big hall, uh, then maybe whoever asked uh, me to set up this network doesn't want this uh, network to fail. Maybe it's a crucial. So we can have one backup controller, second, third, as many as we like. And uh, how can we do this? It's simple. We just go to our access points and add a secondary address. Maybe a third one, a fourth one. It's very easy. We just have to consider it when, when we set up the network. And this can be done also on layer two. Instead of uh, using uh, IP addresses, we can use uh, the interface that uh, communicates with the Capsman. Or we can use DNS names. See? So do you have any comments or questions? Please ask me. Yes. Can you please uh, give a uh, microphone? Uh, just a minute, just a minute. Hello? Yes. Hello. Uh, certificate you needed uh, for uh, each uh, mobile and the laptop inside the... Uh, no, no, no. Inside this or is for Microtech, just for server Microtech? Certificate is just to secure the communication be between the access point CAPS with the CAPS manager. Uh, just. just for this communication. Uh, rest of the authentication and encryption will be managed by the Capsman. We yes. just try to prevent a rogue access point joining the network. Uh, let's say somebody decides to remove the access point and add his own brand or add uh, another microtic with another configuration. Or yes. somebody's trying to do something bad. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, do you have any more questions? Or comments, maybe? Okay. Uh, thank you. Enjoy the rest of the mom. If you need any help any for anything, like consultancy, telephony, VoIP, any telecom project. If you need a training for your company at your place, please feel free to send me a message.
Here are my contact details. You have a question? Okay. Can you please give it? Yes. If you are using uh, two mic uh, wireless controller, if we are using two controller for the redundancy, yes, uh, which uh, certificate will generate in the cap? Which, certif which certificate? Yeah. Uh, uh, we are generating. Are you generating automatically, or are you adding a static certificate? Automatically. Yeah. Automatically. Yeah. Okay. Initially, you are doing. Automatically certificate. Yes. Uh, what happens if you lose the first? Uh, this is your question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe we have to ask Micro if there is a delay for, for negotiating again. If the. This we have to ask Micro But it has to generate again the certificates. If it has to create another certificate. Uh, and perhaps have to use the next certificate. The question is, when are the previous cert certificates timing out? Uh, can we ask Microtik? Support is not here, okay. You can ask Microtik directly. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, can you please give the microphone back? For the wireless question, you may ask Aldis. Aldis is on the desk. Uh, somebody. Uh, uh, on the Capsman configuration, is there any um, configuration pattern you need to adopt to handle uh, interference or issue, issue of interference that is AP to AP? Interference because you know we have a limited number of channels to use, and in cases where you have so many APs within a small area, maybe if you want to, um, to you want to know the channeling part. Yeah, is there any uh, idea you can? Is there any uh, advice you can give someone that wants to configure? Um, well, first of all, it depends on the bandwidth you are using. Are you using uh, 24 megahertz, 40 megahertz? How, how wide is your channel? Is it 20 megahertz? 20 megahertz, yes. Okay. Normal pattern is channel 1, 6, 11. Yes. So you have a big uh, area, right? No, you have a small area. Let's say you have a hall yes. that, uh, that is going to take about 8,000 users. Of course, you need to have so many APs to cover a thousand. So, how do you manage interference in that case? Uh, you well, you have to use channel one, channel six, channel eleven. Again, channel one, channel six, channel eleven. Then the next row of access points, you have to make sure that you use uh, like uh, six, channels. eleven. Okay. Yeah, but the definitely there will be some um, cha um, overlap, you know, no, uh, because we're talking about a small area here, and uh, the the concern is to is to cover, you know, to 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 be able to handle so many uh, clients, because a single AP has a maximum number of clients it can handle. So you have to tune your transmit power. So the access point will signal will will not go so far. So far, okay. Because if you have an access point here transmitting so far, you will, will anyway interfere with the other access point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You you need to make a proper survey on that in yeah, the area. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Uh, if we need to control uh, access points in multi branches, can we use it through one caps manager? or we need to use multicast managers? Like there is Multiple. two offices connected through VPN or a tunnel. It's possible. Can we use each main uh, router as a CAFS manager for redundancy? Of course. 
But if there's but you, time you, need, you need a central location that you have two cups managers, right? Mm. Uh, I guess this is in uh, another location. Yeah. Yes, you can. Uh, you ha will have VPN from all your branches. Yeah, let's say I have three offices. Yes. They are all connected over VPN. Yes. And I have access points in every branch. I need to control them from one location. Yes. One caps manager can do it. One caps manager can do it. And let's say I have sub, uh, did a redundancy. Each branch which is having a main microtech server to act as a caps manager. Will if there is any delay or timeouts, will make any issues? For the redundant? Yeah, let's say that caps manager is the main in the first branch. Yes. And in the second branch, there's a timeout between the, these two caps managers. The access points in the second branch will use the other one. So you want to have the capsman in another branch? No, no. I, I have two capsmen, one in the first branch and one in the second branch. Yes. OK, the access points which are in the second branch. The access points will use the first capsman uh, here. And if this fails, when this fails, they will go to the second, only in this case. OK, so, but in branch one, the first capsman is accessible. Yes. In the second branch, the first capsman is not accessible. Yes. So it will use the second one? It will use the second one, but you have to ask uh, Microtech how long it takes to consider that the first capsman is down. I mean, uh, the latest the version. Timeout. What's the timeout in the latest version? I want, uh, because the 637 one is very fresh, uh, please ask them. Uh, All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much. <laughs> Please don't hesitate to communicate with me. Thank you very much. The next presentation is by Michael Amondi.